Hello, welcome back to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is Clint Spinkick. That's what they call me back in Jersey. Today I'm working on the home of an elderly woman who had fallen. When I say elderly, I mean she's barely mobile. She has to use a walker to get around. She can't clean up after herself. And I, I was told pretty point blank that even if she could, she's always been kind of a messy person. And I guess that's one thing that I always wanted to mention is like not every house is a hoarder house. Not every uh, bit of clutter is because of laziness or mental illness. Sometimes people are just messy. So that's... If you're a messy person, fine. It's It happens. Um, I just happen to be in an area and in a position in my life where I can show up and help people out. So that's what we're going to do for her today. Now, this house smelled really, really bad. She had fallen just a few days ago, and it was a pretty severe fall. She broke, I think it was her arm and her hip. And it was bad enough that she needed surgery. So she was in the hospital getting surgery, and then she's got to spend another three weeks in rehab, which means she can't come home. That also means that all of her perishables that are in there, uh, some of which have gone really bad, and you can really tell it whenever you enter the house, some of them are going to go bad. So she's got family members and members of the church and stuff that are coming over to take care of her pets and to get rid of any rotting food and to make sure the house is you know, not burning down. In the meantime, um, I've got to take care of two main issues with smell. One of them is the rotting food that I'd mentioned. The other one is urine. There is urine in a lot of like the bathroom placemats or place rugs. And I'm going to do a whole bunch of her laundry uh, because they smell really bad, like bad enough to where all, most of that stuff is located in a back bedroom, but you can smell it as soon as you open the living room door, which is on the other side of the house. So anyway, I'm going to start by clearing off all the trash that I can, and then I'm going to move straight into the dining room where I can get rid of a whole bunch of uh, stuff off the dining room table because I've decided that this is going to be my workstation. I've explained it before in other videos, but the way I operate is to clear off one good space and clean that surface pretty much entirely so that I can put all my cleaning supplies and equipment on that table, on that surface, and then I can work from there. The dining room happens to be the dead center of the house, so it's a really good place for me to put all my crap. So I'm going to clean that off with Mr. Clean, and I'm going to let it soak. And then I realized as I was uh, washing this off or wiping it down that it had a whole bunch of sticky stuff on it. So I just put um, straight dish soap on it and then took a soaked rag and just squirted the water, just wrung the water out of that directly onto the table. And then I'm just going to let that soak and then scrub it, scrub it, scrub it until all that's gone. And then take a dry, clean rag and wipe all that down. You don't really need to rinse stuff like this. I mean, if you want to, you can, but it's it's not really necessary because the dry rag will pull enough of that chemical off to, to where if you decided to lick the table, it's not going to taste like soap, which happens a lot with me. But, like, that's how I know that things are clean is the lick test. They call me Lick Test Johnny back in Milwaukee. They're always like, does it pass the lick test? And I'm like, does it? So we're going to take the stink dishes out of here, the stank dishes, and um, I'm going to clean the sink, at least this one side, with Barkeeper's Friend for two main reasons. One, I want the sink clean so that whenever I do dishes, they're not touching grubby, nasty sink filth. And the other reason is it saves me a little time later after I get done with all the dishes. So if I clean this down now, then whenever I'm finished with the dishes, all I've got to do is wipe it down with a rag. Then when I'm done with this side, I can just take the dishes out of the other side and continue the process. So this is kind of like the stopping point 
uh, between both sides of the sinks while I'm stacking dishes. I just make it part of the assembly line. This is a tea pitcher and it is really stained and that is an extremely simple fix. We're just going to put in maybe a couple tablespoons full of bleach and then fill the rest with cold water. If you're wondering why my cleaning supplies are in that sink, it's because like an idiot, I left them in the car overnight and then it got super cold and they all froze. So I had to thaw them out in, in a sink full of warm water. Now that the pitcher's filled, we're just gonna let that sit for as long as we can. Like it'll be one of the, one of the last things that I clean whenever I'm doing these dishes. But the longer that bleach is in contact with those tea stains, and this also works for coffee stains, uh, the better it does. Now we'll just barkeeper's friend the other side of the sink right in its stupid sink hole. And then we'll scrub it like it stole something. Because that's what you do with thieves, you scrub them. I'm not super familiar with how the law works. So I'm just using a regular scouring pad here. You don't need anything special. They sell those real cheap ones at like Dollar General or Family Dollar or Dollar Tree or Dollar Right in Your Face Dollar Store. Dollar Dollar Bill, y'all. But you can just get the cheap knockoff scouring pads and use those. They're fine. They're, they're so cheap you can just throw them away whenever you're done if you want. But I keep those in bulk in my cleaning van. So now we're going to do a Hey Look More Dishes run at 3,000% speed. Because that's how I roll, son. Then while those are soaking, I'm going to start removing things from the left side of the counter so that I can clean it. So I don't want to be setting dishes on a dirty counter and... I have to do this later anyway, so I might as well go ahead and do it while the dishes are soaking. I need to remember to tell her that she's almost out of sugar and flour too. Now I did put about a cap full of bleach in that dishwater, and I'm out of APC today, and I didn't want to run to the store to get more stuff to, to make some, so I'm using that bleach water to sanitize all the countertops. It works just as well, if not better, than APC. And then I'll just go back over the whole thing with Mr. Clean and Blood Owl. Right in your face, clean counter. Suck it. Now I can just wipe down all the containers and stuff and put them back where they go. And then by the time I'm done with this, then dishes should be ready to, you know, knock out the first load. I just needed to soak them long enough to get them uh, softened up a bit because they've been sitting there for a few days. The, she's got like all of her dishes are like pottery type dishes from the 1960s and they're like super cool like none of them have chips in it or anything like that they've been really well taken care of I'm also doing her laundry I think I ended up doing like half of her laundry I found a massive amount in her bedroom so if you can see that clothes basket to the right that's mostly full by the time I brought in all of the stuff from her bedroom that was piled over the top of the washer. Um, I was able to get about half of that done. And had I had more time, I would have done it all. But she also has a pretty small washer. It's not meant for like giant loads. It's like a single person type washer. And then while I'm in here, I'll just wipe down the tops of those to get all the dust and nasty off of them and then jump back into the kitchen. This thing was like uber cruddy, like mega Chad cruddy. That's a jelly butter seasonings like you could probably eat the top of that and it may have been easier just to take a cheese grater to it to get the stuff off of it but i'm going to use the same bleach system on this one i just dip that rag in the bleach water dishwater thing and then squeeze it off let it sit for a few minutes and wipe it down then i'll go back with mr clean and soak that down because that's really really good at cutting through sugar and grease and oil and stuff like that i think i let that set for about five minutes maybe a little bit longer and then i just use a regular scouring pad and use little circles all the way across the whole thing the whole time going do you like that do you like that and it's like no no don't circle my face and i'm like i will circle your face and you suck it counter and then we just take a regular dry rag and wipe that sucker down and she's all done
this kitchen aid hadn't been cleaned in so long and had so much flour on it, you could classify it as bread. Like I'm pretty sure I could have cut a slice off of that kitchen aid, made me some toast. So we're going to clean that up. And then we're also going to clean up her little mini crock pot because that thing was pretty cruddy too. That was cruddy enough to where I had to use a brush on it to get the main nasty off. Oh, hey, look, more dishes. I love ha watching how fast that is. It's almost creepy. It's like an old school tool video. Throw some big chunks of meat on that counter and you wouldn't know the difference. Now, briefly, you could see me put two cast iron skillets in the sink. I did not wash those because those need restored. Those don't need cleaned. They need full-blown restored. In fact, I think in order to get that rust off of there, they're either going to have to use electrolysis or they're going to have to use sandpaper and then completely clean it down, then oil it, reseason it, bake it, the whole nine yards. Those things... The, at least the top one is absolutely ruined with, with rust. I could restore that if I had more time, but I'm, I'm just a cleaner. I'm just here to clean things. I'm not going to restore cast iron. In the microwave, I sprayed that entire thing down with Mr. Clean and then shut the door for about 30 minutes because that thing was really cruddy and had a whole bunch of baked on stuff or microed on stuff waved on stuff. So then whenever I open the door and I grab my rag, I don't really have to do anything else to it except just wipe it down. And then I'll use my ultra fine microfiber cloth to kind of polish clean this. Since I don't have my APC handy, um, just the regular microfiber and ultra fine microfiber is enough to make things shine. It's just easier if I have my APC. And for those of you who haven't watched the other videos, APC APC stands for all purpose cleaner. I explain it in other videos, but I always forget that most of my viewers like have never seen another one of my videos. By the way, if everybody who returned to watch my videos on the channel were to subscribe, we would actually have our YouTube plaque right now. We're over 75,000 subscribers and we need 100,000 in order to get the first YouTube plaque, which is the silver one. And I'm flipping out, man. I want it so bad. I'm going to put it on like a chain and wear it as a necklace like Flavor Flav. Now, a lot of these perishables, I did put some of them back, but some of these perishables I threw away because they're not going to last until she gets home. And then when her niece came over, I gave her a warning that like she's got a basket of potatoes and onions that were, those will go bad within a week and that she's got a bunch of bread and stuff. And then her fridge is going to need cleaned out. So I let her know that when they come back to do detail cleaning or to spruce up or whatever, or to check on the pets, that they'll probably want to look in the cabinets and fridge and get rid of anything that's going to become stank food. They don't put up with no stank food, son. Stank food, more like no thank you food. If you don't have a razor scraper, they sell those things really cheap at Dollar General, at dollar dollar bills, y'all. Now, because they're cheap, they also break kind of easily, but I mean, they're so cheap, they're basically disposable. But I use those on the tops of all like glass top stoves and ceramic top stoves. They're really good at getting burnt on rings and stuff like that off of there. Then the ultra fine microfiber towel, and that's what makes it shine. Then this countertop is pretty much done. Now I can start to put things back here in a minute. If I go back over there at any point, which I'm, I'm pretty much done with it because I spent about 10 hours in this place. But if I go back over there, I will end up cleaning out uh, the refrigerator and the oven. And it wouldn't hurt to actually pull some of her furniture out and even the stove and stuff like that to see if I can get underneath it and along the edges. But for right now, uh, I'm not 
worried about trying to not throw out my back by moving things like stoves and refrigerators while I'm there by myself. Hey, a tip for those of you who get into places that feel kind of overwhelming, because let me tell you something, this, this wasn't like full blown hoarder house, but this could be overwhelming to anybody who doesn't do this for like a living or as a hobby. Anytime you're dealing with a house that's this messy, whether you need a break or not, take one after every 50 minutes, work for 50 minutes and then take a 10 minute break, even if you don't need one. If you're into cleaning and you're excited about getting it done, that will build suspense for you to get back in there and you'll be thinking about what to do next. And if you're not into it and you're like, oh my God, this place is so overwhelming, the break gives you a chance to reset your brain. But I'm telling you, this was 10 hours in one day and I was absolutely exhausted whenever I got home. And those 10 minute breaks every 50 minutes really save my back and my legs and shoulders and sweet, sweet butt. I'm going to polish some of her furniture, starting with this little end table with liquid gold. I mentioned that in other videos, but it's, it's like a miracle cleaner. It's a, a wood oil polish sort of deal. And once you get that on there, it stays on there for at least a week, if not two. So I, when I'm cleaning regular houses, I will use liquid gold on every piece of wooden furniture that I can. I really love this little cabinet thing here, this little TV stand. It definitely gets the liquid gold treatment. I was all massaging it with liquid gold. I was like, yeah, baby. You like that liquid gold on your wood? Right on your wood body. And it was like, mm-hmm, liquid gold, me freak. This bedroom smelled pretty bad. Um, some of it came from the clothing that was on the floor, so I wanted to get that out of there immediately. Um, the other part was that there's a small bathroom that's right off the bedroom that's, that opens up into the bedroom, and that bathroom was extremely dirty. So I'm not going to show the cleaning of either of the bathrooms. It had a bath and a half. And the main reason I'm not going to show it is the bathrooms are so small, I couldn't get the camera in there to get a good shot of anything. So you couldn't really tell what I was doing. I don't know how to get around that for really small bathrooms. I guess maybe I could hold the camera with one hand and clean with the other, but I'm, I'm not good at pointing a camera while doing something else. I lose track of the camera and it's just all over the place. It's like in the early 2000s when people would film like high school fights and the person holding the camera looked like they were shaking an etch-a-sketch.
started off mopping this kitchen regular as best I could and then realized that was not working at all. So what I did was I switched it up and dipped that spin mop, which I hate spin mops, they suck, directly into the mop juice and then just saturated that floor as wet as I could get it without leaving puddles so that it had time to soak into the dirt and loosen that up. And you can actually see the difference as I'm mopping backwards here. So once I was done with that, then I went back and mopped it normal. And each one of these floors in this house ended up getting mopped somewhere around five times. There were a couple of them that got mopped six, maybe seven. I'm not going to show every single time that I mopped these, but they all had to get it so bad. And I could have actually done it even more. What I wanted to do, and if I go back, I will do this, is mix up a bleach and water solution. Spray that on the floor or soak the floor down and just let it set for about 20 minutes. Then go back and mop it all up. Oh, hey, actually, I did uh, show part of the bathroom. This is the one place that I could get a camera in. I mean, you can see what I mean, though. You can't really tell what I'm doing on that sink. It was really, really cruddy, but it just doesn't show up because the lighting's bad and the material on the sink is bad. It's just old. Plus, sometimes whenever I enter a room, the sinks are really, really bad and they show up well on camera. But as I enter the room, the dirt just explodes off of the sink like it knows it's going to get some. It just geysers off of there in sheer fear. I can't help it. That's just who I am, man. It's how I roll, son. I used the same technique in the bathroom where I soaked it down with uh, mop juice, then just mopped it again. And again, off camera, I mopped that three more times. The cat helps me fold some clothes here because, I look, he wasn't going to help fold clothes. And I was like, listen up, cat. You don't want this elbow from the top rope. And it was like, meow, 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 because cat, cats can't talk. He didn't say anything back. He just said, meow, 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 meow. and then by the time he decided to jump in and help, I was already done with that. So I was like, all right, you, you can slide this time. This is a spare like guest bedroom thing. It's just kind of a room where they hang out or if, you know, her niece or nephews or whatever stay over, they've got a place to stretch out. It was dirty, but not nearly as dirty as the other bedroom. So I, I could knock this one out in like 10 minutes. It was just a case of hanging up some clothes that were on a chair, picking up some trash and, and vacuuming. The cat also came in here to try to help me fold clothes, but again, I was too fast. And he did that because he was scared. After the rundown I gave him in the living room, like he knew better than to not come into that room and at least offer to help. So we'll just vacuum this up right in, right in its carpet hole face, right in its carpet face. And then we'll go to the next bedroom. <laughs> Had I had my carpet cleaner solution, I actually would have cleaned these carpets, not because they were stained or anything, which they kind of were, but because there's urine in the carpet from the pets, some from her old clothes and things like that. Her bedding needs washed desperately, but I didn't have time to strip that and wash them. But I did let her caretakers or caregivers know. And as I'm vacuuming this section, that's when I walked by those uh, bathroom rugs and noticed that that's where that smell was coming from. So I immediately, as soon as I was done with this, I grabbed those things and put them in the laundry room, then washed my hands for a really long time. Heads up for anybody who didn't know, I started a members only section and don't worry if you can't afford it. It's like $4.99 a month and I just put one tier. So there's not like a Patreon multi-tier thing yet, though there will be at some point. And 
in that member section, I post a lot of uh, updates with, I don't know, pictures of me and my son doing stupid stuff, um, extra posts. I do one extra video per week on Wednesdays in there. And that's typically more personal type of stuff about my everyday life, uh, what we do in the business. Me and There's also like me and Jason just goofing around. Um, there's one video where I practice my sweet karate moves. And you can ask the regular members, those moves change their life. But if you want to join, just look around. There should be a join button somewhere. I know there's one on the main channel. And if you're an iOS user, there's evidently a problem where the Mac products won't see the join button when you're using the YouTube app. But if you go directly to the YouTube channel using just the browser, it does show up. I googled around to try to find fixes for it. It's a YouTube problem. And some people have workarounds and stuff like that, but I, I can't test it myself because I use Android because I'm old. I use liquid gold on this dining room table and I love watching that shine happen as I go across it. But we're now in the wind down uh, section of the video where I've, I've just got a little bit more mopping to do, but now we're starting to redecorate the place and get everything back where it goes. Now we're doing the crazy soak down phase again. I wish it had shown up a little bit better on camera. I know I know it's showing up some, but man, in real life, you can actually tell where my mop stopped because there was just so much ground in dirt. And I, I know she can't get around to mop, but really I think if she could afford it, I don't think she can, but if there was ever a way she could afford it, she really needs like a weekly housekeeper to come in and do all this stuff for her because she's got really nice stuff. And for the most part, it's kept clean. It's just, I think that if you don't have somebody there weekly, it's going to be very, very easy for this place to get out of hand. There we go. Like I said, if you're not subscribed, uh, don't be a devil worshiper. Subscribe, man. We only need to get to 100,000 and we're so close. And then we will have a YouTube plaque that I can rub in the faces of all my kids' friends to make them feel bad the way they should because they don't have YouTube plaques. If you can't make your kids' friends cry, then what's the point? Anyway, I'll see you all next week. And for the members, I will see you on Wednesday. Suck it.